Hello there again YouTube, it's Farid here from Lil Pop Studios and you're watching After Effects 101. With reference to the course outline, we've already finished course 1 and I've had a couple of interactions on that video. It has about 96 views now and I'm waiting for the 100th view before I post this course. So if you're seeing this course, which means that video hits 100 maybe 2 or 3 days ago. Taking course 2 into consideration, today what we are going to be doing is we are going to be creating and manipulating shapes using the track mat, blending modes in After Effects, all about masking and keyframe animation and if we blend all these skills together by the end of this video you should be able to create something like this yes this is the all new calipo that comes in different sizes and different flavors i'll be you know that now. this advertisement has been vetted and approved by the fda before I continue into the tutorial for today, my sub count is still 359 and I thank you guys for that, it means a lot to me. My goal for the end of this year is to hit a thousand subscribers. I know that goal is too high for me to reach but with hope and um, with aim I think I'm gonna be able to do it. So without any further ado, let's just swoosh into After Effects and start the tutorial. And we are in After Effects now and if you don't understand what I did to get to this point, it means you are lacking behind and you'd have to watch the first course which I'll be leaving a hover card somewhere up here. That's the course one where I teach you how to create a new composition and all those beginner basic stuff that you need to know before we get into the advanced, the advanced stuff. So, before we learn how to manipulate shapes, you must first learn how to create shapes. And I'm going to send you back into your primary geometry or your primary mathematics class. It depends on which country you live in. Now, we have regular shapes and we have irregular shapes. Now, the regular shapes are created by these tools inside here. Those are the rectangle, the rounded rectangle, the ellipse and the polygon and the star tool. And the irregular shapes are created with the pen tool here. It's very simple to understand. Now, when we click on any tool inside this regular shapes here, that's maybe the rectangle, it gives us an opportunity to either choose whether we can fill our shape with um, a gradient or we can fill it with just a normal color, which is very simple to understand when I finish demonstrating. So first things first, after selecting my rectangle tool, I'm just going to click and drag to create a rectangle inside my composition and since my fill is set onto white here my rectangle is filled with white here now in case i want to change the color of my rectangle or i want to add a stroke to my rectangle what i only do is i'm going to click on this fill here not the color here first i have to click on this fill here and pick what i want to be inside my rectangle whether i want a linear gradient or i want a radial gradient and i can pick the blending mode too which we'll be talking about later in the tutorial so if i pick the linear gradient it kind of looks like a transition from a color to another color which if you are a photoshop user a gradient wouldn't be a new thing to you but usually i prefer that you leave your color on this solid color here but if you want to change your um, solid into a gradient there's no problem with it if you know much about gradients and color and all those things so i'll just go ahead and click ok and i'll come and change my color by just clicking on this white solid here or this white thing here and i'll make it somewhere let's see yellow that will make me differentiate my work when i'm doing in, on a white background or something else now next we have the stroke which also gives you the opportunity to choose whether your stroke should be a gradient or it should be just a solid color so when i click on this it gives me the opportunity to choose whether my gradient uh, sorry my stroke should be a gradient a solid color or something else and the blending modes too is also present in there now here is what shows me the stroke size or the stroke width here this is set to 200 pixels i can reduce this down but since we are using a black composition i'm going to change my stroke color to something else just to give us some differentiation so when i reduce this size here you see that it reduces my stroke for me that's very simple to understand next we have this ad here that's just for animation and since we haven't gone into keyframes yet i wouldn't be talking much about that when you click on it it gives you the opportunity to access the fill the stroke 
the mesh parts trim parts this will all be used for animation when we get to keyframes next is how to create irregular shapes irregular shapes are created with the pen tool the pen tool as i said in the beginning of the first that's the first course i said the pen tool is used to create masks and shapes it's in such a way that if you select an object and you select the pen tool you are creating a mask around the object but if there's nothing selected and you're selecting the pen tool you are now creating a shape now let me show you what that means since nothing is selected inside my composition and i click on the pen tool it then gives me this fill and stroke color that i was talking about when i was creating my shape now let's change this to something greenish and change this to something bluish so when I start clicking, it starts creating a shape. That's an irregular shape that I've just created right now. Before we go into manipulating the shapes, I'd like to urge you that if you haven't subscribed, I guess then you should do that now and turn on the notification bell so you'd be notified whenever I post educational and exciting content like this. So moving on into how we manipulate the shape, we can manipulate the shape in terms of roundness, manipulate it in terms of skewing, we can warp it, we can um scale it we can rotate it we can reduce the opacity all these things are termed as manipulation but we have an easy way to do that that is with keyboard shortcuts and my teacher always told me that before you learn something the easy way you should try to get it the hard way so whenever the easy way doesn't work you just use the hard way so first things first we need to now access what we can use to manipulate the shapes in here that's just by clicking this small arrow in here so when i click on it it brings out two panels or two bars which says contents and transform and here is the same thing that we saw up here that's for keyframe animation which we'll talk about later in the video so when i click on the contents the only content inside this layer here is the rectangle that i created let me turn this off so it won't be distracting us and when i click here again on this arrow it gives me the rectangle path that's the size it gives me the position and it gives me the roundness then it adds the fill and it adds the stroke it adds the transform it gives me so many things to work with now when i'm going to explain all these one by one it's going to take a while or it's going to take long so i'm going to pick the important parts and let us explain them now the size you already know what the size is the position you already know what the position is now for the roundness it only tells us or it helps us to manipulate this side the sharpness of this side so when i increase this roundness here it tends to bring my shape or it turns my shape into something like a circle that's very simple to understand and this can also be achieved simply by rather using the rounded rectangle instead instead of using the rectangle and coming in here to use the roundness and do so many other stuff next we have the stroke editor which here is the blending mode that i already talked about but i'll be going in depth like with the blending modes later in this tutorial next we have the fill which gives us the composite above preview so many other things that we can edit inside here next we have the transform which does almost all the work when you're manipulating your ship now first things first the anchor point only shows you where your center is i already talked about this in the first tutorial the position the scale and the skew now this skew here if you're a photoshop user you know what it does the skew only i don't know how i'm going to explain it but practically the skew picks this part here and then moves it and makes it kind of like a parallelogram that's very simple to understand when i start doing this i hope you understand that's just basic primary geometry if you've done geometry in primary you know what the parallelogram is and when i increase my skew it gives me some kind of a parallelogram now this isn't any different any effect or any of these controls which are inside this transform here most of them are inside here which i don't really need to tackle that anymore they are just the anchor points the position the scale rotation and opacity i think opacity can be a new word to some people who are new buys to the adobe creative cloud and opacity only just judges the transparency or how visible your layer is in your composition now practically when i reduce the opacity you see that the black 
at the black at, in the composition at the back tends to start appearing a little bit and that's just what opacity means on the list we have using the track mat the track mat is a very simple thing to understand and it's a very useful thing whenever we are doing animation if i'm to explain the track mat to a layman a track mat is kind of let's say a mask or if you're a photoshop user who is just new to after effects i'd say a track mat is the the clipping mask and after effects in photoshop we call it the clipping mask and in after effects we call it the track mat now let me demonstrate something when i create a new shape here i'm going to disable this stroke okay and then i'm going to just create a new text just as, as simple as that now let me scale up my text and you see something when i scale up my text this way before i can be able to apply a track mat to this here it would have to be below the layer which i want it to be in now you'd understand whenever i activate the track mat now how you can activate the track mat is very simple inside the layer panel or the composition the timeline here we have this track mat here and when we click on it it gives me the option to use an alpha mat shape layer one an alpha inverted mat shape layer one and luma mat shape layer one so many things that i can experiment with now why this shape layer one is there is because since this shape layer one is just right above my text that's that's the only thing i can apply a track mat to before you can apply a track mat to something it must be directly above what you want to apply it to in the timeline or in the composition panel or something so when i click on this here and i apply an alpha mat you'd see that this shape layer here has disappeared that's one thing you should note it has disappeared and this my text here has stopped appearing at this side and it's appearing inside this side why that's because since i activated an alpha mat with shape layer one this text here is supposed to appear only inside the shape layer here so when i move it here this way you see that since the shape has ended at this point this my text wouldn't be appearing at this point again and as i already said that's almost equivalent to or that's almost the same as clipping mask in adobe photoshop next we have the alpha mat inverted which rather does not let what you've created the alpha mat on appear inside that shape as very simple to it's just an inverted something so let me scale this up and create the alpha inverted shape and you see you see that now when i bring this fiery or something this text here it doesn't appear inside the shape which i've created the alpha inverted mat on same for this luma mat here um it's the same for this luma mat this rather works with white i think so this works with white yep luma already means light or something this works with white and the luma inverted is the same thing as the alpha inverted mat as very simple as that so we'll be using this practically later in this tutorial next on the list we have the blending modes in adobe after effects now for this i'm just going to clear these two things here and i'm going to create a new solid by right clicking in my composition selecting new and creating a new solid here and i'm just going to make this something orangey then i'm going to create a new solid again and then i'm going to make this blue so what we are now going to talk about are the blending modes in adobe after effects this which i have no explanation for i don't know what blending modes mean but if i'm to explain what blending modes are to a layman or someone who has never used adobe after effects or any software in the creative cloud i would explain blending modes as let's see let me give an example when i pick sugar and salt and then i place them in two different jars and then i mix the sugar and salt together first thing is that the sugar will be on top or the salt will be on top and the sugar will be down it will still be separated until i mix them so when i mix them i've blended them into each other and it's kind of using this same scenario in adobe after effects here the way i blend them together is 
in types that's the types of blending modes so the way i blend these two colors together they are in types inside here and those are the blending modes which you are going to be experimenting with i just hope i didn't confuse anybody now the blending modes are as follows how to activate or how to see the blending modes are just when you are in this view here you can just click on this toggle switch is a mode to bring these blending modes out so first we have normal which leaves your layer just on normal next we have the dissolve which dissolves your layer into the next one this really doesn't have any that much effect next we have the dancing dissolve next we have the darken which now creates something now i don't know how to explain it darken just what does what darken does then multiply that's what it does color bend that's what it does add that's what it does when i turn this off you see that we have our orange solid when i turn this off and turn this on we have our blue solid but when i turn both on just to note a point to note blending modes do not affect the color of your composition when your composition is blue or when your composition is green when you blend your solid with it it's just blue for being blue it, it doesn't affect anything inside your composition can't you see since it's black and i added i change my blending mode nothing it's going to happen until there is something under it that's when it now happens so when i click on color dodge and i turn this off this becomes blue because it recognizes nothing under it and it's just a void of just black that's just the color of the composition which has no effect inside the composition it's just there for beautification sake that's just it Here comes the little difficult part that is masking masking is a very very easy but kind of broad thing inside adobe after effects without any further ado let's just get into it now before we can activate or we can create a mask we need to have a layer selected inside our timeline then we can now pick either the rectangle tool or any tool in here and when we just click and drag we've created a mask around it first things first we need to access what a mask can do now if i'm to explain a mask to a layman a mask is just something which covers a part of somebody and shows a part of somebody that's very simple to understand because when i created the mask it showed the part at which the rectangle is present and it took the other parts out now in order to access your mask menu when i do this and it's just a normal blue solid with nothing there when i click on here i have the opportunity to access my mask through here that gives me the blending modes or it gives me the modes of the masks which are very simple to understand we have the add here we have the subtract we have the intersect we have the lighting we have darken and we have difference now first i'm going to explain what none does and none already means it does nothing the mask is just there for their sake next we have the add the add only works when you're working with two or different uh, three different masks now let me let me let me explain that i'm going to add another mask here this way so since this mask both of these masks are set to add it means any mask i create inside my composition should add to the mask i had already created but immediately i change the second mask to subtract it tends to remove from the mask i have already created if i turn this one to subtract again it tends to bring the parts that i have not masked out and leaves the parts that i have masked inside that's very simple to understand next we have the intersect and the intersect only intersects with the mask that you've already created so when i change this to add and i change this to intersect this only shows me the part of the masks which kind of intersect with each other i think geometry again in mathematics or geometry class that sets back in shs when you learn sets a intersection b it shows only the intersection and it leaves everything behind next we have the different sorry we have the lighting which also does almost the same thing as the add next we have the darking which also does the same thing or it almost does the same thing as the intersection next we have the difference which now takes out the part at which your two your two masks intersected the intersects only shows 
what is in between your two marks when they intersect and the difference takes that one out and shows whatever else is around as very simple as that next we have the inverted so be, be, be first thing i'm going to delete this mask here by just pressing delete next we have the inverted which almost does the same thing as the subtract so since the opposite of add is subtract when i change my blending my mask blend mode to add and then i click on invert it's going to change my mask to subtract and when my mask is on subtract and then i click on inverted it's going to change it to add as very simple as that so next we need to move on into what really what masking is really all about or the what we can tweak the values we can tweak when we create a mask inside or on a layer inside our composition now that's just going to be accessed simply by clicking this arrow here and that gives us the opportunity to play with our mask path our mask feather our mask opacity our mask expansion first things first the mask path only this is only done with keyframes this you can only edit this with keyframes which is very simple to do when we start keyframe animation but i'm just going to give a simple hint a keyframe is just something which tells your composition do this at this point in time and don't do this at this point in time it's very simple it's just like an instruction or an order like codes yes just something like codes so what the mask path does is that it's it's used in tracking your mask though that's one thing it's used in tracking your mask i'm going to import a footage inside here and we'll experiment with that first so hold on i'm just going to pick something like this and then i'm going to create a new comp from this selection so i'm just going to create a new mask a rough mask around my face like this and this has created a mask around me so i'm going to access my mask menu here and i'm now going to explain what the mask path does the mask path can also only work when you activate the keyframing that's when you click on this tiny clock here it brings a small this small diamond here that's what we call a keyframe it's it that's what shows your composition where or what to do at what point in time so let's say i want my mask to follow me that's the mask path here i want my mask to follow me anywhere i go inside my video so i can decide to move to this part of the composition let's see this thank you so you can see that my mask right now it's kind of hocus pocus it has gone somewhere else so in order to bring it back to normal or in order to let it follow my mask of it let it follow me every single time i i move about i can either create keyframes for frames 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 but since this is just an experimentation i'm just moving it elsewhere it's just to show you so since this here is activated any time i move this under the, under, oh, under the diamond is going to be created here so when i move this this way you see that the diamond is created so when i start playing back my footage my mask is going to be moving from where it started that's this first diamond to where i placed it at this diamond here so now take a look you see my mask starts moving it has started moving when I get to this point and I start moving again, the mask is not going to move since there are no keyframes created. But let me create a keyframe for this and move this mask path to this point and you see. So when I start moving from here to this part, it now starts moving to this part again. As simple as that. Next, we have the mask feather, which does nothing much but smoothing the edges of your mask. This is usually done to hide mistakes in post-production not every time do but usually we use mask feather to hide some kind of mistakes inside our post-production so when i increase this mask feather it increases the smoothness around my edges which makes it look more cooler next we have the mask opacity which is very simple again the mask opacity just reduces the opacity of your mask and next we have the mask expansion 
which increases and decreases your mask and all these can also be toggled with just this clock here that's to start your animation so i'm going to press ctrl z to bring my mask back to normal and next we have one other simple feature of masks that's i should have talked about it inside this mask path which is tracking your mask it's very simple to do it it saves you a lot of work instead of trying to animate every single for every single frame and let your mask follow i'm just going to deactivate this and take off all the keyframes let me bring this back to normal or let me delete this mask rather and create a circular mask on my face yes this will be very simple to work with this should be simpler to work with so right now i want the mask to follow my face every single time but i can't keep creating keyframes for my mask path each time i move my head and that's very simple to do but sometimes it doesn't work because it works with color and contrast usually when when you're working with pictures and, and, and other stuff so what we need to do is we need to track our footage to save us some time we are going to save ourselves some time of the time we, we would use to start our animation with just one frame one frame one frame one frame we are just going to use just one feature to save us all that time so i'm going to trim my composition here i'm just going to trim it to this part that's just about um hold on let me trim it to this part just about um 12 seconds or something no this is seven frames sorry there's seven frames hold on let me bring this to about three seconds okay so what i just need to do is very simple i'm just going to right click on this my mask here and it to show me this small box here that's the only thing which is there and i have no choice but to click on it that's the track mask now in the panels at this side of the composition it shows me the analyze that's this one i'm going to analyze it backwards that's i'm going to analyze it backwards again and this is forward and this is also forward but one of these buttons here tracks your mask forward by one frame and one of these here also track it throughout the whole scene so this here tracks it throughout the whole composition and this here tracks it just by one frame if you want to be more careful i think you should be using the one frame one frame one frame so you can be editing your mask anytime your mask goes hocus pocus now the method we have the position scale and rotation you can choose whether you can take you can um let's say track for your face your perspective your um position and rotation position only it depends all on you we'll talk about face tracking i've always wanted to do face tracking i've always wanted to make a tutorial on face tracking but i think there are a lot of tutorials out there which i've already talked in depth about face tracking and i don't want to be kind of um um, 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 um let's forget about it we didn't come here to talk about what i want to be about so usually i'd like this to be on position scale on rotation so it will track your mask whenever your scale increases or whenever your my head turns or something that's very simple to understand so with all our details set i'll just click on this here to track my selected mask forward and i'll be waiting now our mask has been tracked and now let's play through and see what happens now you can see that the mask followed my head and my head was in the center for a while then it now went hocus pocus something like this at this point so in order to just fix that i can come and move my mask to this point and then i can just click here to analyze it again so it follows the reference i gave it and it just overwrites these keyframes that i've already created here as simple as that now my mask is tracked and you see what happens thank you now you see that every single frames keyframe has been created here and if you hadn't known what to track mask or if you hadn't known how to track a mask you would have been the one to do all this all by yourself so i think when 
done with all we need to know about masking for now let's move on into the biggest and the broadest topic of today which is keyframe animation Ba-dum. the moment everybody has been waiting for keyframe animation keyframe animation keyframe animation this is kind of like the 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 heartbeat of after effects this is just everything that a motion graphics artist should know before he can call himself a motion designer or a motion graphics artist almost every single there's no single motion design or any motion graphics that you'd see and there are no keyframe animations inside it this is just basically the heartbeat of motion design so if you understand this correctly and if you understand this very well i don't think there's any animation that you can't do so without any further ado again let's just roll into it first off i'm just going to create a new circle here just this i'm just going to create this this is what i'm going to use to do my experimentation now this circle here is just blank nothing happens when i just play through it's just raw i'm going to trim my composition to this part sorry let me just make my composition settings and make this on one minute sorry no, i'm just going to leave this on 35 seconds yes and i like my composition this way so when i play through this is just a raw a raw circle just lying down like that now before i explain keyframes i'm going to move into the transform menu of of this i'm just going to move into the transform menu and give you the simple shortcuts that we can be using every single time to prevent us from clicking on here and clicking on this transform and moving to this anchor points and all those things now first thing that you need to know is scale in order to bring your scale up easily you just press the letter s and scale appears whenever i just want to scale my footage or i want to scale anything inside my composition i wouldn't need to go here then go to transform and then i have to have access scale through there when i just press s scale appears next we are going to rotation rotation is r when i press r my rotation appears so since this is a circle you wouldn't know okay since my anchor point is not in the circle you know that i'm rotating it i'm going to press ctrl z to bring this back next we have opacity shortcut is t i'm sorry it wasn't o here it wasn't o right i knew you were guessing o but it wasn't o it's t so position the the shortcut for position is p the shortcut for position is p position is p so when i press p it brings out my position property and gives me the um opportunity to, to add keyframes now as i've already explained in the beginning what a keyframe is to a layman or someone who has never used the creative cloud application before a keyframe is just something or like a code which tells me that at this point in time in my composition this property here should have this value and at this point in time at this composition this property here should have this value very simple explanation but now let's move into the practical effect or practical way now first thing i'm going to create an animation for my scale which i'll just press s to bring now in order to toggle our animation we can just click on this stopwatch here but before i do that i would like to bring my anchor point in the middle which if you don't know how to do it i think that you should revisit my last video i'll be leaving a link in the description where i talked about the basics in adobe after effects it's kind of like a one hour long video so there's nothing you'd miss before coming into this video so if you haven't watched that video just please pause this video and go back and watch it till the end before you now come into this video or you're going to be confusing yourselves now for the first thing i need to do i'm going to click on this here to toggle my animation that's what creates a keyframe so when i click on this here it now tells me that at this point in time the scale of my shape layer one should be 100 by 100 now this thing here does nothing it just links your scale it just 
connect both of them together so whenever this is 100 this should also be 100 so when i unlink this this would be moving alone and this would also be moving alone sorry so when i press ctrl zz to undo and i link this again when i scale this this is what happens it now scales uniformly or proportionally now since i've created a keyframe for 100 by 100 here i'm going to move about let's see 10 or okay one minute and then i'm going to increase this size here to 355 now that's very simple to understand what i've just done is that i've told my my project or i've told after effects that at one minute i want my scale to be 355 but at the zeroth second i want my composition at the scale of my shape layer to be 100 so what does after effects do it now starts scaling your shape layer proportionally on its way till the one second to make it 355 so when i bring this back here like this you would see that every one frame i move back this value decreases till i reach my zeroth second and that gives me 100 so when i play this through this is what it gives me very simple as that now i can decide to create a keyframe in the middle like this and make it bigger than this one so now what i've told after effects is that at the 12th frame inside my composition i want my scale to be 618.5 but at the end or at the one second i want my scale to be what 355 and at the zeroth second i want my scale to be 100 so when i play it through this is what happens very simple now before i go into anything else again i'd like to experiment with the rotation and the scale uh, sorry and the um opacity now taking these keyframes off i'm just going to select all these and press delete to delete all these keyframes so now there's nothing or there's no animation moving in here and then i press t to bring out my opacity so when i click and reduce my opacity down to 40 like this and move in here for the 10th frame and then i increase my opacity to 100 i've told after effects as i already did in the scale that at the 10th frame i want my opacity to be 100 but in the beginning i want my opacity to be 40 so when i play back this is what happens very very simple doing the same for the rotation also gives you something like this but since this is a regular shape i'm just going to and scale it this way so we'll see when it's rotating and then i'm going to delete all the keyframes for opacity and i'm going into rotation to click and at the 10th frame i'm going to rotate it this way so when i play my animation back this is what happens very 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 simple so these here are just the mere um basics of keyframe animation if you know this and you understand this you would forever be um a fortified motion graphics artist <laughs> it's very funny okay so now taking all these out i'm going to delete this here i'm just going to delete the shape layer and create a new one and then i'm going to bring this into the middle yep and then i'm going to bring sorry this is not in the middle yep it's now in the middle i'm just going to align this layer here in the middle so now i'm going to duplicate this by pressing ctrl d and then move this one aside and then move this to aside i'm going to move them to the top both of them like this i'm going to explain something we call the easy ease keyframes and easy ease in and easy ease out now i'm going to create a keyframe for both of this these two here but in order to create keyframes for multiple things all you just do is select both of them and then you can now pick the property at which you want to scale them so when i click on position like this it creates keyframes for both of them so i'm just going to move into my 10th frame 
and then I'm going to move all these down the Y axis to this. So when I play my animation, this is what just happens. Okay, so I'm going back into the 20th frame here, yep, and then I'm bringing this back to the top like this. So I now have something like this. Now I'm going to differentiate with what raw keyframes or when you just create raw keyframes what they mean and i'm just going to differentiate between that and easy ease in keyframes and with this what is going to help me is the graph editor which i told you we'll talk about when we are doing keyframe animation back in the beginning like about four days or five days ago that's in the first tutorial if you haven't seen that links in the description i won't talk much about it again so now let's move on before we can now activate the graph editor, we first have to select the properties graph we want to appear. So we are going to click on this position property here on this shape and we click on the graph editor to bring its graph out. Don't be confused, eh? don't be confused. This thing is very simple, very, very simple to understand. Now, what this tells you is that at this point in time of the animation, it just came in raw like this to this down part and then just came out like this again that's kind of too kind of raw for um, a normal or a professional animation so let me just um take this let me easy ease this in or i'm just going to right click on the keyframe here inside or you can right click on it here then we are going to easy ease this or you can simply press f9 so when we easy ease this this now becomes um it, it doesn't become a diamond anymore it becomes two diamonds submerged inside each other but now let's <clears throat> let's go inside the graph editor and see what has happened so now when we check inside the graph editor at first it was just a normal line like this but since we've added the easy ease keyframes it now comes in smooth very very smooth <clears throat> now when i play both of my animations you're going to see difference now you see that this one here just bounced off like it just bounced off but this came in smoothly and and went out you see this just bounces but this comes in smoothly when I, i'm going to play this this animation like three times so you see the difference you see the difference now easy ease keyframes just comes in smoothly and then comes out but the ones which are just raw keyframes just come in and bounce and then it just it just can, kind of comes in too raw too raw i don't like it that way it just comes in too raw okay so then we have the easy ease in and easy ease out that's also simple to understand so i usually add easy ease out keyframes for keyframes which are at the beginning and i add ease out for keyframes which are at the end so when i open my graph you can see that this part now kind of has a slanted way and this also has a slanted um this also has a slanted graph in here that helps us to make our animation more smooth and more professional sometimes so we can do the same we can create animations for opacity too we can select both of them and create animations for opacity so when i move to my 10th frame i can make this zero and then when i move to my 20th frame I can increase this to 100 and I can easy ease these two frames. I can easy ease this and I can easy ease this too. So now this is what happens when I play it back. You see, there's much difference. Very, very much. You see that at this point, this one's opacity has gone 100%, but this is still kind of bright a little bit and it just goes easy ease keyframes just really they just help you when you're doing your animation so enough of the blabber or enough of the chatter let's now get into real work before we continue with this part i'd like you to pause and go into the description and download the project files which i've provided for you for just for you 
inside a Google Drive file, download it and come back and let's continue with the amazing thing that we are going to be doing right after this short sponsor break. Today's sponsor is nobody else but you, just you, yes, you. You are the one who is subscribed to this channel, you are the one who likes my videos, you are the one who gives comments, and you are the one who keeps me motivated to create more videos like these. Thank you for always supporting me with your likes, your comments, and your subscriptions. I think you can support me more just by sharing. <laughs> but thank you for what you've been doing always. It means a lot to me. Currently at 359 subscribers. And I already said my goal is 1,000 by the end of the year. I'm just joking though. Thank you guys for sponsoring this video. Now let's move back and create something more epic in Adobe After Effects. So I have already imported mine inside my composition just by right clicking and clicking on import. And I just imported that through here. That's very simple to do. If you have already imported your footage, then just forget about it and let's skip into the interesting part. Today we are going to be doing something for Calipo. I think if you've seen or if you've downloaded the project file, you'd understand that we're doing something for Calipo today. Now let's create a new composition and we are going to leave our aspect ratio on 16.9 and leave this on 35 seconds and leave our background color to be black. Yes, I think I would like my background color to be black. Okay. So now I'm going to create a new solid and make that solid a little bit orange like this here. Um, like this. You can copy the color code. That's F29A00. I'm just going to leave my solid this way. And then I'm now going to import the first thing in my composition. That's the first. That's the background PNG. So when I import it, I would have to scale it down to 16.9 to how my composition is supposed to be i'll tell you what you scale yours to be so when i check my scale it's 40 yep 40. so i'm going to scale it by down to 40 by 40 inside my composition so you can follow me or you can find your own scaled value so first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to animate this to come in to fade in so in order for it to fade in we are going to be using opacity right so first i'm going to just press t and click on the opacity property and reduce my opacity to zero and then i'm going to my fifth frame and then i'm going to increase my opacity to 100 so when i play it back we have something like this very simple animation or we can decide to prolong this one just by 10 frames let's bring it this way so it will look kind of it will come fast a little bit thank you so next we are going to import the second one which is the table here so our table would have to scale it to by 40 and it's inside our composition now so we are going to animate the position property for this one so I would like it to come right after my um, background has faded in, but I'm going to let my background stay alone for about five frames before. So after 10 frames, I'm moving into the 15th frame here. And then I'm going to create properties for the position. So I'm going to click on the position property here. And then I'm going for 10 frames after 15, that's 25. And then I'm going to click on this here to create or add a keyframe. Then I move back in here and I bring my position down this way. So, so when I play back this animation, I'm going to have something like this. Since I'm, I'm using a full quality, let me reduce this back to quarter. So it will reduce my playback time and it will reduce how my RAM is eating very simple animation but i can decide to increase or i can decide to speed up the time at which it moves in i'll leave this for seven and bring this back by two frames and then after this seven will be 20 yep so i bring this back in here 
so i now have a sped up animation like this very simple so now I'll let this also wait for five frames so after this one two three four five after the fifth frame i'm now going to import what am i going to import the first one this third is the coconut leaves so i'll import it here and i would like i would have to scale my coconut leaves down by 40 percent too and i like my coconut leaves to rotate in very simple i like my coconut leaves to rotate in so i'm going to create keyframes for rotation and let it move like okay i don't think it's well okay no problem i'll create a keyframe for rotation here and move one two three four five six seven seven keyframes back and i'll bring this back to zero and i'm going to add opacity keyframes too i'll leave this on 100 and move back by seven keyframes and bring this to zero so when i play back i have something like this very simple but this kind of moves in too well so i'm going to add some more keyframes i'm just going to move two frames back two frames like this i'm going to bring this one two frames in front sorry that's the rotation I'm going to bring these two frames in front and then I'm going to let the rotation go somewhere here and then I'm going to copy these two keyframes by creating pressing ctrl c and then I'm going here by two frames again and I'm going to press ctrl v to paste them so now you see what happens that moves too fast but hold on let me bring this Okay, four frames. Then I can decide to make this one move a little bit higher. Yep, that's minus 4.9. So when I move here, I'm going to make this minus. And I have an animation like this. So I'm going to easy ease all these in by pressing F9. And I'm going to easy ease all these two by pressing F9. And I'll press F9 <coughs> to easy ease all these in too. I just hope my audio is clear for everybody to, to listen. So when I play this back, I have something like this. Very simple. Then the fourth one I'm going to animate is my cloud. I'm going to let this wait for five frames again and then I'll bring my cloud in and scale it by 40% again. Your value may differ from mine so I'm now going to create and keyframes for position and animation so I'm going to move this back like this here and create a position keyframe for this but i'm instead of using seven frames i'm going to use this till the end of the composition and then i'm going to move it to the other side of my composition so it will look it will move slowly but i'm now going to create keyframes for opacity and that's also very simple to do just by pressing t and i'm going to move this this way this way and then i'm going to reduce the opacity i'd like the opacity to be 40 because a cloud shouldn't be that visible so when i play my compass my animation back again thank you very simple as that so i can decide to do the same as i did for this one here I can come four frames in front and bring this keyframe here I can copy it and paste it here and then come back to this keyframe here and bring it up up yep and then I'll copy these two keyframes here by pressing ctrl c and then I'll move in here four and then I paste it in here again so when I play back, I have something like this. 
so it kind of looks like a bouncing effect that's very simple to create next we are now bringing in our haze which our haze should be there for the whole composition this is this haze is is nothing it's just some kind of um white solid which i just created this there's no animation for this it's just there then for the sixth one we now have our first calipu which we are now going to animate now we need to check for the point at which everything in our composition has settled that's two minutes one second let me just make it two minutes and bring a uh, sorry two seconds one frame let me just make it two seconds so i'm going to import my first kali pool in here and then i'm going to scale it down by 40 so this is it here my first kali pool is here without a shadow and i'm not going to mind i'm going to import my second kali pool and i'm going to do that for the third and the fourth kali pool I'm going to select all these here and then i'm going to scale them down by 40 and all my kali pools are now in here as simple as that so now i'm going to bring the shadows into and then i'm going to scale this down by 40 percent too and let these be under my kali pools inside my composition so now i have my um design that i already created in photoshop now in after effects it's time to animate all these things so i can decide to turn these calipos down here off then i'm just going to leave this shadow alone i'm just going to leave this shadow and then what i'm now going to do is i'm going to create a mask on this shadow so it starts appearing as soon as my calipos start coming in but we'll get to know that when we start animating the calipos so the first calipo here i'm going to pick the position property then i'm going to click and turn it on sorry this is the shadows i'm working on this is my first calipo i'm going to pick the position property and turn it on and then i'm going to let the position i'm going to let it come in for let's see um um i don't know i can let it come in for 15 seconds 15 seconds is kind of good so i'm going to create a new position keyframe here before i now go back in here and now start editing so i'm going to move this back i'm going to move this back here very very back like this simple it's very simple this here then i'm going to easy ease all these keyframes here so this is what happens when i play back very simple now since it's here and there's no reason why it should be standing here throughout the whole composition i'm going to create a new solid and this is where our track mat now comes in so i'm going to move to this part where it's supposed to appear and then i'm just going to create a new solid like this here yep and then i'm bringing it under or over this first calipo here and i'm going to create an alpha mat shape layer one for this so now when i play back i have something like this very simple then i'm going to do the same thing i'm going to wait in the middle of this one's coming in let's say at this point then i'm now going to copy keyframes of this here and then i'm going to paste it on this one here then in the middle of this one too when i turn this on i'm going to copy the keyframes and then i'm going to paste them on this one too by pressing ctrl c and ctrl v i'm going to turn on this one too then i'm now going to check for the middle of this two and then i'm going to paste the keyframes on this one here so we have a very simple animation like this very very simple now it's now time to create the same shape layers for the other ones again so i'm just going to press ctrl d and bring this on top of this one 
and change this track mat to alpha mat inverted shape layer 2 then i'm going to press ctrl d again bring it on top here give this an alpha mat and then i'm going to press ctrl d again bring this and give this an alpha mat but since this rectangle here does not cover this part of this calipo that's why it's cut it's very simple to replace we just scale this up by this percent very simple so now we now have to create keyframes for our shadow coming in which is very simple we can start at where this one is supposed to appear that's let's say at this point i'm going to start at where this one's keyframes started um the first calipo the keyframes for the first calipo started and then i'm going to create a mask around the shadow here i'm going to create any irregular mask here this way so i'm now going to animate my mask expansion from here till the end of my animation here i'm now going to increase the expansion so the whole shadow now comes out And I'm going to feather it by, let's say, 200 or 500. I'm going to give it a, a very much feather so it's not that notable. I think this feather is, uh huh. I'm going to make the feather 1000. And then when I move in here, I'll just make sure that the feather is very good for my composition. I'm going to increase the mask expansion again. So when I play back, I have a very cool animation for Calipo. Like, um, um, I think my mask should be moved somewhere here because this shadow appears. Okay, okay. So now I have a very cool animation for Calipo like this. Very, very, very sweet and simple if you're a beginner motion graphics artist and you do something like this i think you are you are the sweetest person on earth so now to tie it up more to our scene i'm just going to create a new text just a small one I'm just going to create a small text and type calipo calipo yep and then i'm going to change the font here I don't think I have any script fonts, any good script fonts. Let me see. Let me see. Hold on. Let me check. Um, I don't think I have any good script fonts in my... I think any door is good. So, I'm not going to scale this up like this. And leave my calipo positioned in here so i'm going to duplicate oh, hold on i'm going to put it on top of my composition and then let me change the color to something orange uh this orange doesn't look good i need to change some uh i need a bright orange yep this orange looks good and then i'm going to duplicate this and add a stroke to my layer i'm going to make the stroke color yellow yep and then I'm going to increase the stroke. I'm going to increase the stroke like this and place this one on top of it. So it looks cool like this. So now, right after my, um, excuse me, I think my yellow color looks too dull. So I'm just going to brighten it up and make it more orangey. I'm sorry, that's I'm going to select this one and I'm going to change the color and make it more brightly orange like this. Yep. And then I'm going to reduce the stroke to something like 30, sorry, 15. And then I'm going to duplicate this again by pressing Ctrl D. And I'm going to pick this one and make the stroke 30. And then I'm going to decrease, I'm going to bring this down to give me 
this cool look that I have here right now okay so I can decide to make this calico here white nope I can make it here white this this looks very very cool so right at the end of my fourth um uh, my fourth calipo coming in i'm going to wait for just five frames like this and then i'm going to start animations for scale so i'm going to pick this this one i'm going to press s then i'm going to click one and move back one two three four um five frames back a uh, five frames in front rather sorry then i'm going to click again on this here to give me another keyframe and i'm going back and creating a keyframe for zero and then i can decide to increase my space here by look at this is seven and then i'll now copy this here and then after four keyframes after four frames that i'm going to paste this here and bring this back and increase the size here so it it goes like like this then i'll copy these two keyframes here and paste this here then i'm going to place my anchor point in the middle and then i'm going to do the same for the others too or i can decide to copy this keyframes here but i'm going to offset it by five frames no let's say four frames so after four frames i'm going to paste the keyframe on this one and move four frames in front again and paste the keyframe on this one and i would have to change the anchor points for all of them i have to change the anchor point for all of them bring this into the middle take this two and bring it into the middle so i'm now going to just add a drop shadow it down is it doesn't really matter it's just to to add some kind of perspective i'm just going to increase the softness and i'm going to copy this shadow by pressing ctrl c and then i'm going to paste this shadow here and i'll paste this shadow on this one too but i'm going to reduce the opacity of this one down to 20 yep so now i have myself an add of calipo so i can now decide to take all this and i'm going to align all of them in the center since they're already aligned in the center no problem and i can create a new text just by right clicking new and text and then i'll call it let's say abi you know dada simple a very simple text then i'll change the the the, the font to filson you can just you can use any fonts that you have installed inside your pc then i'll increase the vertical spacing and i'm going to decrease the size like this and bring it in here then i'm going to create keyframes for position so right after this last one bounces in i think that's here so i'm going to just wait till this part yep and then i'm now going to create keyframes for position so one one two three four five and i'm going to create keyframes again and i'm moving back to the first one here and then i'm going to move it out of frame like this so then i'm just going to add a new single solid here and bring it down oh, sorry i'll just leave it there and create a, an alpha mat so i'll bring this i'll scale this down a little bit so when it comes in okay then it, it looks cool here so i'm now going to change the the color of this text since it's not visible on white here i'm just going to change this one to something orangey and i just have to add some more brightness a little bit and it's okay 
then I can decide to copy this and paste it hold on I'll just click on this and this and paste it then I'll move both of them I'd have to delete the keyframes for position here so I'll move the two of them the two of the shapes here down here and I'm just going to add what every Ghanaian add adds that's this advertisement has been vetted and approved by the FDA simple as ABCD then I'm going to change this color to white and decrease the size like this I think the size is okay now so we can bring this shape layer on top here and change the alpha mat to shape layer 6 that's it then I'm now going to align this in the middle and I'll have to move this shape layer I'll have to increase the size then I'll now create keyframes for position so I'll move like five frames in front and then I'm going to take my position like this and I'll come in one two three four five five frames again then I come this way so I'll bring let me make it come from this side so I think I'm done with my animation and in order to tie this up to um, some kind of a natural feeling or a natural look I'm just going to select or by pressing ctrl a and then I'm going to toggle the switches or modes and turn on motion blur inside my composition just to give it a feel of natural look once we are done with our animation we can now trim our animation to this part um let's see to the, the seventh second and then there are simple ways in order for you to to trim your composition for rendering you can either oh hold on i think my my i have to increase this 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 shape yep and this is it yep i would have to press either n to bring this thing to this part of where, where my playhead is that's to trim the composition for rendering or i can just simply bring it there which isn't really accurate so i can press n to bring it back then in order to export my footage out i can click on file and export and add it to the render queue but if you have um, an adobe media encoder if you have adobe media encoder it's a software which we use for rendering you can use that for rendering while still using after effects it's very it comes in handy i'll be leaving links in the description too so what we're just going to do is we are going to click on add to render queue so it will be added to our render queue now we don't need to touch this render settings we just have to leave it on best leave the resolution on full and leave everything untouched next we are going to the output module which this here the lossless that's avi avi has high quality but it comes with a price that's a very big size and a more much more render time and we have so many other things but i'd like to stick with quick time that's um mov and in the color management i'll leave everything as it is then with the format options when i click here i have the chance to change my video codec usually you can leave this on apple apple prores lt or you can leave it on animation on anything you just choose what really fits whatever you want then audio output since there's no audio in here we are going to be doing it in premiere pro i'll just click on off that's going to um reduce my render time very much so then i'll just click on ok 
and then i'm coming here to choose where i'm going to save it so call episode two then i'm going to save it as um calipo commercial okay so then i either queue it in adobe media encoder or i just click on render so i'm just going to click on render and let my animation start the rendering so i'll get back to you after my animation has rendered right after the render is done um i'll just send it into premiere pro do some sound design and add some voiceovers oh, oh, oh. i'm going to add my bass voice to it and add some voiceovers and then when i'm done um, i'm gonna have an effect oh sorry this is not an effect i'm gonna have a result like this yes this is the all new calipo that comes in different sizes and different flavors i'll be you know that now. this advertisement has been vetted and approved by the fda you've really done a great job getting to this part of the video i think this has been a very very long journey and it's like um 12 29 p.m oh sorry am at my place i think i'll have to sleep but i'll have to encourage you that if you haven't subscribed do well to do so and if you've used this tutorial to create something out of what i just thought or if you've used the assets i provided in my google drive to create something you can text me on whatsapp i'll be leaving a link in the description you can text me on instagram and send me your work and i'll be glad to feature them in my next video even if it's in 10 years time or 170 years time unless i haven't seen it you can then follow me on my social media handles at Lil Pop Studios. That's on Instagram and on Facebook. You can like my page at Lil Pop Studios. On WhatsApp, I'll leave the links in the description. Then, with just two CDs, you can support me on Patreon via the link in the description again. And till next week, I'll tell you to get some creative ideas and keep it real. Peace out.